Copy back to the stage three. Hilly stage, but ends up being a bunch sprint. Ineos basically looked after it all day, made sure the brake didn't go too far. And then in the final, basically just kept it all together. We've got five kilometers to go. Um, we've got some pretty strong sprinters here. Like no one, you know, Cav got dropped on this particular stage. So obviously he'd won stage number one. Uh, Jonas Vingegaard uh, was the leader in the general classification. He won the stage on stage two um, and was looking really, really good. I'm going to make a video about him because I think he's going to go really, really well um, in the future. Obviously, want to stay to the UAE tour, but enough about him. We're going to talk about Ethan Hayes today and why I think that he's got the potential to be like one of the GB's next real top, top stars. So I made a video um, about him winning Tour de l'Avenir a couple of years ago. And he was really, really strong in that one and uphill sprint. Um, in a select bunch sprint and like he, if you don't know him he's a pure tracks guy you know he's going for the olympics uh in the team pursuit but he's definitely on the sort of more endurance side than, than a pure sprinter but can win bunch sprints can climb very well and generally i'm really excited about him i think he's going to go super super well um in a lot of races like obviously he, he won his first pro race uh last year in italy as well uh and after a couple decent results um where he was you know there or thereabouts but the first pro win he had was the giro de Lapanino. But like he's won a lot of under 23 races as well um two stages in the 2019 under 23 giro so Ineos are on the front here like three four kilometers to go and just making sure that he's up near the front and Ineos had a pretty strong team here obviously sosa was going for the overall but you had him now you had carlos rodriguez who did really really well uh in provence and ben swift who i think is seriously underrated he's got a lot of um close to podium i think he's got two podium finishes on san remo fourth in world championships in bergen in 20 17 so he's really really strong and i think someone some guy some people maybe underestimate him slightly but he's as the the last lead out man um but quick step uh they got shane archibald uh and then we've also got some other riders like nat now tespion who i mentioned in uh my recap of stage one which cav won uh sorry state yeah well stage one which cav won um and Jakob mosca as well for trek and nick schultz is pretty quick as well and albanese uh for eolo cometa who were on the left hand side um, so, you know, everyone's also worried about GC as well, but Ineos do quite well here. Uh, they've got Carlos Rodriguez on the front, and Ethan Hayes is now third wheel just behind Ben Swift in the White National Championships jersey. I think the key the key thing about this is just staying near near like, near like the front, but not on the front, and just being relaxed and trusting your lead-out guy 100%. Um, he's got Ivan Sosa behind him, so I guess he doesn't have to worry about anyone on his wheel, which is pretty good. Um, and Carlos Rodriguez is really, really strong. And I mean, he's not that experienced. He's only second year pro straight out of juniors, but you know, he clearly can ride on the front pretty well uh, for a guy who's who's so young. Obviously, as you can see here, it's just sort of chaos in Italy. Um, uh, well, just everywhere with bike racing, you know, a lot of traffic furniture going around roundabouts, bunny hopping. So that's why staying near the front because the acceleration is so much less. This Kahara rider is really, really drilling it out and just making sure that you know, people stay safe. And this is the thing, actually, if it's a technical run-in and everyone's in single file, it's quite hard to have a crash because all you have to do is just not overlap wheels and you're pretty much chill. So in some ways, these run-ins can seem quite technical and, and maybe oh, they seem very technical and therefore potentially dangerous, but in actual fact, it can often be the opposite and that highway run-ins are, are the issue. But with one kilometer to go here, Ethan Hay is in about fifth wheel. He's dropped back a little bit, sorry, two kilometers to go now. Ethan Hay has dropped back a bit. Um, I believe this is Sebas Hanau on the back, just cruising because he's done his job. I believe Sosa should be in the pack. You never know with that boy because he's uh, not always the best. But going around this right-hand corner, again, you can see every time it's always strung out and you just need to be in the front. And Ethan Hayer, to be fair, lost a, a little bit, a couple of wheels now. He's now maybe sixth, seventh wheel. Uh, and you've got the Sunweb guy on Ben Swift's wheel. Ben Swift goes out and has a little look around and is like, oh, where is he? And you can see he must be pretty chill because this Kaharu Rao rider is looking on the verge of death on the front. And he's looking like, you know, is is a real strong turn. But Ben Swift's got enough, you know, uh, fitness just to have a look around, not panic, um, and realize, you know, with two k to go, you're probably a bit too far forward, if anything. And there's no need to rush. And Carlos Rodriguez gets on the front here, but I can imagine Ben Swift was telling him like, you know, you don't need to go that hard. Just wait, wait for our sprinter to come up um, on the left hand side. You can see Session moving up. Um, and now you can see Hater just moves up very chill and the pace wasn't too high at that point. So he didn't really burn a match. He didn't have to sprint. And now you've got, you know, we'll put around one kilometer to go, I would expect with three riders, which is pretty much ideal. Um, there's the Flam Rouge there, I believe. I'll ask kilometers, they said, on the screen now. And just watch Ben Swift's positioning. I think it, having him in front of him for Hater is just so good because he's just so chill. Like Carlos Rodriguez is obviously burning out now. He's done a lot of work on the front. And he's not also, I'd say, one of the most punchy guys. But Ben Swift hops onto the DSM train. Pretty chill. Nick Schultz has got his guys behind him. And Tesfion is behind for Androni Sidemek. And Ben Swift now decides, like, okay, we'll just surf on his wheel, surf his wheel. Hater looks really chill, really relaxed on the wheel. 
Um, there's no stress here. This is the last lead out. He's about to do, um, finish his work, the guy for somewhere, for DSM, sorry, and Ben Swift's now moving up. And on the right-hand side, you've got Quick Step trying to move up Shane Archibald. But ben, when Ben Swift starts to go, um, he really opens it up. And now just look on the right-hand side, you're gonna, be, sorry, left-hand side, you're gonna see Ben Swift moving up, haters on his wheel, and just launches it quite early with about 150, 200 meters to go. And just no one can step out of his wheel. It was a hugely dominant sprint. You know, he just managed to stay next to the barriers. No one come on the left, right hand side. Ben Swift, like when he fell back, he fell back on the left hand side. So it meant coming around him was quite hard. And no one's even close. No one's like on his wheel. No one could come around. It was just such a dominant sprint by him. Um, and I think that's the thing is like he's got a really good sprint, obviously, but like not pure bunch sprint. But on these hilly stages, I think his threshold's so good and he's such a good climber that he's really got a lot of energy left. And you can see, like, you know, Shane Archibald, Nick Schultz behind him, just, you know, they've got no chance of uh, getting on his wheel. So anyway, there's Ethan Hayes' win on stage three. Uh, we're going to go through Jonas Vingegaard in a bit um, and show you why I think he's really good. And, um, yeah, so anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Uh, it's quite good to be able to have some live footage. Uh, and uh, here's just the last little replay of Hater absolutely dominating everyone, thrashing the bike around. No one's coming close. So anyway, see you in the next one.